Hi everyone, this is Dr. Piloff. I'm going to give you guys a uh, course overview and highlights of the syllabus for Finance 301 for fall 2014. Make sure to read the entire syllabus. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction. Here is the entire Finance 301 team. Uh, you've got me, I'm a course coordinator, kind of like the CEO of the whole class. There's three professors, myself, Professor Canterbury, Dr. Galay. Uh, we've got a whole slew of great teaching assistants um, and we have one graduate assistant who's going to be helping us uh, when it comes exam time. In the class there's five sections. There's four traditional sections. They're going to be Mondays and Wednesdays for lectures and on Friday for lab. And then there's a distance section uh, which has some online resources and we try to make everything available for all students in Finance 301. So if you're in an online class and you're interested in attending lectures or lab, you know, come check that out with me. Lectures and lab students have access to lots of online resources as well. You may have heard a lot of things about this class. Um, what I'll tell you guys right now is to disregard what you've heard and I'm going to give you the truth. This is what this class is all about. First of all, the professors, we love teaching this class. So I've been doing it for five or six years. Professor Canterbury has been doing it for longer. Dr. Galley's new, um, but he's taught other classes. We, we really enjoy it. Um, the entire team, all the TAs, all of us, we really enjoy teaching the class. And we want you to be successful and we'll help you be successful. At the end of the semester, some of you will love this class. Some of you will say it's your favorite class, and some of you will change your major or add a finance major because of this class. A lot of you guys are going to find this class to be interesting, rewarding, and you'll perform very well and earn high grades. So if you're listening to this thinking, I can be one of those people. More truth. The class is difficult and challenging. It's quantitative, and it's not just something you can study the night before and memorize and come in and do well on the test. It's quantitative. It builds on itself. You really have to understand it. However, we want you guys to be successful and we'll help you be successful. Lots of resources and lots of guidance how to use those resources. Everything you need is laid out. What you need to do be successful is laid out. You just need to do the work. And so again, that's what it says right there. Success in this class requires substantial and consistent effort. Many, many, many students find that this is one of, if not the most difficult classes they take. And you just got to put your nose to the grindstone, do the problems, make sure you understand them, see people if you don't, have, if you don't understand them to have, and have your questions answered. And you can do really, really well in this class. Course grades, it's a straight up weighted average. We have four quizzes. The highest grade that you get give you a little extra weight, 20%. The lowest grade on any quiz gets a little lower weight, it's 13. And the two in the middle get 17. So if you do poorly on a quiz, it doesn't, we don't drop it, but it doesn't have quite the bearing as the other quizzes. There's a graded assignment, it's worth 1%. And then the finals were 32%. We take a weighted average and convert that into a course average. And that determines grades. So there's a couple of key cutoffs. One is 65.0. You need a C or better to satisfy some requirements, and you're limited to three times. So if this is your third time, or you think it might be your third time, talk to an advisor to make sure you understand what all the implications are. Second key cutoff is a 76.0, because that's a requirement for a B-, minus, which folks need if they want to be a finance major. Exams, there's four of them. They're 50 minutes. September 19th, October 10th, October 31st, and November 21st, so make sure your schedules are available for that. If you're in a lecture section, it says 1, 2, 3, and 4, that should be 2, 3, uh, 4, and 5, or 1, 2, 4, and 5. Um, we change the time, so it's the traditional lecture sections. Um, we'll take it with their lab section, so they'll take it on that Friday with lab. If you're in DL1, then we need to book a room and they don't do that until after the ad date. We're hoping to get a room at 10 a.m. and possibly an afternoon option as well. But your exams will be on that and we'll know more about a week or two into the semester once we can actually reserve those rooms. Final exam is 145 minutes. If you're in a traditional section, again it says 1, 2, 3, and 4, but it should be 1, 2, 4, and 5. I think 3 is the one that got dropped. 
take it with the GMU assigned time for your lecture section. So Monday, Wednesday at noon or 1.30 or 3 or 5.55 or whenever you meet GMU's time, that's when we'll take it. DL1, we're trying to get Friday, December 12th at 1.30. Again, we'll know for sure once the rooms become available for reservations, but we think that that's a time that we can make happen. Uh, make All makeup quizzes are on December 5th, and just because you miss a quiz, you need to get permission to take the makeup, and it's fairly limited, health-related, religious-related for like a major holiday, um, military-related, and if you're GMU activity-related, uh, for example, an athlete's got a, a game, um, the syllabus lays out what you need to do, but whether you miss quiz 1, quiz 2, quiz 3, or quiz 4, they're all going to be made up on December 5th. There's a graded assignment. It is very modest. It's done through Blackboard. It's due 11.59 on November 21st, 2014. Everyone should get 100. Go to Blackboard up in the left. It says graded assignment due 11.59 on 11.21.14. You click on it. You answer some questions. And the reason you should all get 100 is because all the questions are multiple choice and true false. You can take it as many times as you want. And you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of time to take it. So knock it out of the way, no reason to miss out on that 1%. There's one extra credit opportunity. We don't give extra credit as a way to kind of say, okay, you did poorly, so now you can have some extra credit to do well. We've put a lot of material out there. If you find errors, what's posted on Blackboard, uh, you get some modest extra credit, typically a tenth of a point on your final course grade. Um, so if you find something, let me know and make corrections. Um, Typically, at a, fall, a full fall or spring semester, we might have 30 or 40 uh, things that get found. So if you find something, let me know. Participation and attendance. Not taken directly into account. The only way it might be is if there was some bad behavior. That's never been an issue. I don't expect it to be an issue. Um, but, you know, whether you come or not is completely up to you. We have lots and lots and lots of resources, uh, online, class, discussion board, office hours, problems, just lots of things and you guys can choose what you want to do because you are adults and we think you should be responsible for your own education. So we're not gonna give you some kind of external motivation to come to class. Come to class if you find that that's a beneficial way for you to learn the material. We think it is tremendously valuable um, so we encourage people to do that but there's lots of resources out there. We've had people be successful choosing lots of different paths and people not be as successful choosing lots of different paths. So it's really up to you to choose what you want to do and work hard and you can be very, very successful. And so again, like I said, regardless of what you do, people tell us that this class requires more effort than other courses. Just stay on top of the material and you'll put yourself in a position to be successful. Um, required items. Oops, it's not working quite well on the slideshow. One, make sure your email account's working. I send out lots of emails. You get a big weekly one. You get ones before exams, after exams, special things. So you're going to want to make sure you get those. Um, financial calculator. T83 Plus is the one we support because it's got this nice big screen. But any financial calculator will work. We don't do a lot with the financial calculator as far as, you know, making you experts in it. It just does some calculations for us in a way that's a lot easier because it's designed to do it. Uh, Blackboard. Blackboard is kind of the, the centerpiece of our course. Um, the key materials are in there in course content. We don't have a textbook. The overheads function like our textbook. Uh, lots and lots of practice problems. There's a set of problems called test bank problems. They've been cut down by 25 to 30 percent this year. I got rid of a lot of repeats and actually some of the easier ones. Um, exams are based on these. Some of the problems there's video solutions for and if there is you'll see in the problem there's a little link you can click on it if you find that you learn better that way um, you can do it that way. Um, there's also questions from old exams everything from fall of 2009 to spring of 2014 all the fall and spring exams are up there and it gives you extra opportunity to do problems. When you see the test bank, if a problem like that was asked on an exam, it's cited. So we try to give you real clarity as what we expect you to know, where you can go to practice it, and so there's another opportunity. Lecture problems. Some of those are more basic. They're particularly good for students using the video lectures or students that want to 
you know, get their, make sure that they're a little bit more solid with their understanding before attacking the test bank problems. Lab problems get posted weekly. Um, in addition, and other resources are finance tutors. There's a list of students who have done well in Finance 301. They've agreed to be tutors, and a list will be posted up on Blackboard that has all their contact info. Um, so all arrangements and terms and when you meet and financial arrangements is between the tutor and the student, but helping link the two groups together has been real beneficial for both students wanting a tutor and tutors, old, former students wanting to, to help out. Um, there's a list of video lectures and their links uh, for distance students and others that are going to treat this as an online class. You're going to want access to those, but students that come to class often find those video lectures useful as well. Uh, there's a discussion board. Really, really want to encourage that. Um, I'll ask all the TAs to subscribe to the discussion board, So, which means when you post a question, an email will go to the, all the TAs, and then someone should answer you because the way they get paid there's an incentive to, to respond and then all students can see the response and so we really want to try to encourage use of that discussion board the course is very 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 similar for everybody except traditional students and again it should be I think one two four and five you guys have class two lectures per week and a 50-minute lab the distance students you guys have an opportunity to schedule online office hours with me. I used to have regular office hours, but they were very, very, very rarely used. So now we'll try to do it at when you guys um, are interested, um, and hopefully that can increase some usage a bit, um, but that's the only difference. One thing all of the students have access to, any instructors face-to-face -face office hours. So between the three professors and the nine TAs, there's hours all the time when you can come in meet with someone ask a question you know why is the number of periods this and why do we use this equation I don't understand how we knew to start this here you know why is this divided by four all those kinds of questions you got an opportunity to come and talk to somebody we view this class like joining a gym you've got access to a lot of great resources you got a lot of equipment you know, you go to the gym, there's all these weight machines and treadmills. Here you've got overheads, you've got classes, you've got video lectures, problems, office hours, all different kinds of things. You've got trainers, you've got your professors and your TAs, people who are there to help you. You've got workout plans. I'm going to send weekly letters. There's got, you know, give you guidance as to what you need to study. However, you need to do the work. You need to get in shape. Just like going to the gym, working out on a regular. That's like you, learning the material. Use the resources. Doing many, regardless, you're going to do many, 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 many problems. And then you're going to have to perform when it counts. Just like an athlete has to step onto the game, on the field or the court and perform, the grade is 99% based on exam scores, and so that's what is going to determine the grade. Our job, give you what you need. Your job, put in the work, make success happen. So let's go ahead and have a great semester. I'm looking forward to it. I know everybody on the instructional team is as well. And I think we can go ahead and make this an excellent, excellent, excellent semester. I look forward to meeting people. Goodbye.